insect, often confused with bees, is the wasp. But unlike the bee, who seeks out pollen as a food source, wasps are carnivorous, feeding almost exclusively on meat. Whether it's the western yellow jacket or the bald-faced hornet, both of these insects are commonly known as wasps. They are major predators of other insects. They're strongly attracted to any sort of animal protein. So sort of the good that they do by you know, eating your garden pest is somewhat nullified by the bother they cause by trying to eat your barbecued chicken. For those not allergic to wasp stings, an accidental run-in with this creature may simply be a painful nuisance. But for more than a half million people in the United States who have an extreme sensitivity to the venom, a close encounter with the stinger of this fierce insect could prove fatal. Within 20 minutes, people that are going to have a full-blown allergic reaction will feel extremely disoriented and lightheaded. Than 50 calls a week. On this particular day, Jim's first call takes him to an underground colony of western yellow jacket wasps. In order to safely extract the wasps from their subterranean nest, Jim uses a vacuuming device of his own design. The insects will be trapped unharmed in a two quart container. There come a few, huh? This thing is pouring out yellow jackets. I don't know. You, it, I mean, very few are being missed. They're mostly going in. This is just a big nest. You cannot underestimate the force of a yellow jacket nest. They range in number from four or five hundred to four or five thousand in a big nest. They're substantial colonies. When I've dug out big ground nests of people's homes, they're always just aghast at how truly large the thing is in there. Holy cow, look at this. That's a huge number. That's maybe a thousand right there. They will remain alive in the bottle and basically uh, unharmed long enough for me to put them in a cooler full of dry ice. Jim does not charge for his services. He considers the insects he collects payment enough. Really, within two, three minutes, they'll be out uh, frozen. After the insects are collected and put on ice, Jim sells the fresh frozen wasps to pharmaceutical companies that produce medicines used in venom immune therapy. Jim's second call takes him to the carport of a local home. Here, a colony of another species of wasp, bald-faced hornets, have taken up residence. This nest, made of a paper-like substance produced by the insects themselves, must be dismantled before it can be removed from the ceiling. This procedure offers a rare, close-up view of the intricate and complex design inside the nest. The interior is teeming with life. These organisms are the next generation of the colony. The white half domes that you see are pupil cells, and the uh, ivory-colored animals next to that are fully grown larvae. You can see their mouths moving. The insects Jim collected this day are frozen until they are ready to be shipped to the pharmaceutical lab. Each nest is a baggie and then each big bag is a species. And that's how they go out. Once the frozen wasps arrive at the lab, their stingers are carefully removed. The minuscule venom sac is then separated and saved to produce venom immune drugs. It is truly a feel-good sort of job. I mean, people are happy when I show up because they have a problem they want to get rid of. I get money from the lab to supply them with yellow jackets, so I'm happy. The lab's happy because they're satisfying a need they have, and ultimately, people are being helped by this treatment who are at risk to die from these insects.